Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of Four Bushes and Flaherty Field. Bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is one of our favorites of all time, actually. 1964's The Mask of the Red Death, starring Vincent Price. Yes, um, this also has Hazel Court, Jane Asher, and Patrick McGee, who you may recall from Tales from the Crypt, Mm -hmm. as well as Asylum. That's right, yep. Um, This is, of course, um, done by Roger Corman. Yes. um, Who we've shown Corman before, uh, The Undead. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think back in his early days, he was most known for doing independent films and low-budget films. And this is neither. Absolutely. It is well done, and it is a beautiful film. Yeah, it really is. You know, Hazel Court, um, who's no stranger uh, to horror films. Yes. You know, uh, she was in uh, The Raven. Yes. Which had... Uh, Vincent Price as well. And Jack Nicholson. A very young Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was also in uh, The Curse of Frankenstein, um, the Hammer film. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I would say in this film, this is one where Vincent Price is at his most sinister. Absolutely. There's really not much humor to him. No. No. No redeeming quality. No. In him. In this. None. No. It's fantastic. It is. Yes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1964's Mask of the Red Death. Take this to your village and tell the people the day of their deliverance is at hand. According to my custom, I have come here personally to thank you for the year's harvest. And to make sure we'll starve on what is left. And to invite you to a feast to be held in a fortnight, where annually I gather about me the nobles of the countryside. And you'll throw us the scraps from your table as if we were dogs. Exactly. 
But these dogs have a loud bark and show their teeth. Why? An old woman met a holy man on the hill. He made a prophecy. He said the day of our deliverance was at hand. From your tyranny. Well, then shouldn't you be on your knees to give thanks? Garotham. No, I beg of you. Mercy, mercy. Mercy in the name... The girl was addressing me. What is your name? Francesca. What do you want of me, Francesca? Forgive them. Forgive them. That is not possible. They have defied me. If my hound bites my hand after I have fed and caressed him, should I allow him to go undisciplined? Forgive him, I beg of you. How innocent you are. However, I am disposed to temper justice with mercy. So I will leave it up to you, Francesca. One must die. Which one? One is my father. The other is the man I love. You promised me entertainment, but I never hoped for this. Can such eyes ever have known sin? They will, Alfredo. They will. However, this is not for your entertainment. Even so, Francesca, you must choose. One will live, one will die. Or both will die. <coughs> Silence that! Well, choose, Francesca. Which will die? Choose. <coughs> I'll take care of everything myself. What is it? Look, sir. Look. The Red Death. That old woman was told the prophecy. Did you touch her? No. Or you, or you? Take them to the castle. I'll take the girl. No. You may provide us with some entertainment after all. To your horses, friend. Burn the village to the ground. Why'd you burn their homes? Winter comes. This is your day of deliverance, remember? to my intended guests, to the Duke of Verga, to Verona, Florence. Tell them that they are to come here to my castle without delay. And if they wish admittance, to avoid the village of Catania, but to come at once. 
You will watch. In my own time. The princess, now is the time. I will do nothing until I know about Gino and my father. <laughs> Modesty, but no humility. Gino, my father, where are they? Why do you hide yourself? It's not right that you should look at me. You may go. That cross you wear around your neck, is it only a decoration, or are you a true Christian believer? Yes, I believe. Truly. Then I want you to remove it at once, and never to wear it within this castle again. Is she always to be bathed in my bedroom? We'll find you another room, Juliana. Meanwhile, you will dress the Lady Francesca in one of your finest gowns. I don't... Later, you can instruct her in the ways of the court. Please, my father. Oh, yes, your father. Your father and your lover are being quartered in a warm and safe place. Now I must join my guests. You may think that you have impressed the Prince Prospero, but you can count on little help from me. You will do as he told you? Yes, as we all must do. I will do what I must to save my men. But if they are killed, I will die. And so will Prince Prospero. speak to you about the uh, anatomy of terror. Terror? What would you know of terror, Alfredo? Your senses are much too blunt. What is terror? Come. <laughs> Silence. Is it to awaken and hear the passing of time? Or is it the failing beat of your own heart? Or the footsteps of someone who, just a moment before, was in your room? But let us not dwell on terror. The knowledge of terror is vouchsafed only to the precious few. <laughs> and now may I present for your entertainment the dancers Esmeralda and Hopto. Oh, I 
I'm sure you do, Alfredo. I'm sure you wonder about every female in my household. And everyone with the appearance of innocence. You seem to take great pleasure in corrupting. I'm not corrupting, Alfredo, no. Instructing. were full of size, she'd drown us all in wine. Well, my first novelty seems to have failed. However, on the Sabbath at midnight, for your amusement, there will be a masquerade. The wardrobes of the castle are yours to use. But I beg of you, even for the humor of it, do not wear red. <laughs> you go too far. I am not without influence and power against the Red Death. Yes. Yes, it came to the village. Even now, it lays waste the countryside. So you can count yourselves fortunate that you are here in this castle under the protection of Prince Prospero. May I present the Lady Francesca? Meanwhile, continue with your merrymaking. Act according to your natures. Signor Veronese, <laughs> you do little but eat and swill and dream of other things. How like a pig you are. <laughs> Be one. <laughs> 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 you, Senor Lampredi, huh? you laugh at this poor pig, huh? <laughs> while you are small and insignificant, no more than a worm. Can you be a worm, Lampredi? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear how she laughs? It is like nothing so much as a praying jackass. Be <laughs> one. <laughs> you, Senor Rimini, ride that jackass to market. <laughs> As for the rest of you, use your imaginations. Show me the lives and loves of the animals. We cannot make something more exotic of her that will appeal to me. Francesca? My father imprisoned a friend of his in this room for three years. When he was released, he could never again bear to look at the sun or even a daffodil. How cruel. Cruel? It was simply a test to prove how easily a man's mind can be controlled and twisted. 
My family have always been interested in such things. Somewhere in the human mind, my dear Francesca, is the key to our existence. My ancestors tried to find it. To open the door that separates us from our creator. You need no doors to find God. If you believe... Believe? If you believe, my dear Francesca, you are gullible. Can you look around this world and believe in the goodness of a God who rules it? Famine, pestilence, war, disease, and death. They rule this world. There is also love and life and hope. Very little hope, I assure you. No. If a god of love and life ever did exist, he is long since dead. Someone, something, rules in his place. No. No, that room is not open to you. Not yet. What's in there? You look as though... Is there something to fear in that room? For the uninvited, there is much to fear. This has been a trying day for you. You must sleep. You must sleep. Tomorrow you may see Gino and your father. Prince Prospero, why do you roam the late night corridor? Sleep eludes me. You have disturbing thoughts? And you, Giuliana, what keeps you awake? I think my thoughts dwell on the same subject as you, the peasant girl. She has a perfect faith. So do I. In you and in what you believe. I've been an eager student, but I've held back from the final ceremony. And now... I'm ready to join you at the invocation. Now, oh, truly realistic women are. <laughs> Finally, you are ready to dare the most terrible rites and incantations to secure your position here. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if she is ready to dare as much or anything for the sake of
You know how Falcon is trained, my dear? Her eyes are sewn shut. Blinded temporarily, she suffers the whims of her god patiently until her will is submerged and she learns to serve. Thus your god taught and blinded you with crosses. You had me take off my cross because it offended... It offended no one. My master and his followers look about with open eyes. No, it simply appeared to me to be discourteous to, uh, to wear the symbol of a deity long dead. Your master? Satan. The 
the Lord of Flies, the fallen angel. Seeks entrance to Prince Prospero's castle. Prospero's invited guests, open the gate at once. It is the prince himself who speaks to you, Scarlatti. You are no longer welcome here. <laughs> really? <laughs> I know your whims, but... The village is full of the Red Death. The Red Death? Prince Prospero, I beg you. Allow us, Haven. I beg, sanctuary. This is no church. By any god, in all the gods of time, I beg you! <laughs> My wife, you've always thought her beautiful. I knew you desired her. I watched your eyes following her. This Scarlatti thought of himself as a good man in many things. And he thought of his wife as pure and unassailable. I give her to you! To do it as you please! I've already had that doubtful pleasure. Prince, spare me the red death. I beg you, in the name of friendship. In the name of friendship! No! For you, friend. Madam, spare yourself the red death. Pick it up. We've been ordered to teach you the use of arms. I will not learn to fight my friend. Now, don't be a fool. One of you could survive. If you fight well, the living one might be given his freedom. To live like you, like one of Prospero's pet dogs, kill me. But Prospero will see you dead for spoiling his entertainment. I won't kill you. I'll just cut you a bit. rather fast. It is a true fact that the greatest swordsman in Italy would not fear the second greatest, but would fear the worst. For that one would be unpredictable. Francesca. Are you unharmed? Yes, Gino. And you? Scratches given to taunt me to fight. But I will not fight my friend. You may force me to discipline you in some other way. Do what you will. We will not fight. And I don't think you'll give us up to simple torture. Because if you did, then in a way you would have lost. <laughs> you surprise me. However, I'm pleased to find that you've given me a puzzle to think about. Somehow, you two will challenge death together. You may be certain of that. No, this way, my dear. It would be better. Ah! Ah! I 
understand. Life is often ugly. But to torture men. Is this what your master Satan demands as worship? These cells are very old. A hundred years ago, an ancestor of mine was a Christian monk. He was made examiner of an early inquisition. He tortured over 600 men, women, and children in order to save their souls for your God of love. I cannot answer. I have no learning. But then is Satan a God of hate? Oh, no. Of reality, of truth. The world lives in pain and despair, but is at least kept alive by a few dedicated men. If we lost our power, chaos would engulf everything. Sometimes that power must be used to teach harsh lessons. But I don't want to learn. I'm afraid. I do not want to hurt you, my dear. Can't you understand? I want to help save your soul so you can join me in the glories of hell. No, never. The way is not easy, I know. But I will take you by the hand and lead you through the cruel light into the velvet darkness. Lord Satan, he who is known as Belial by the ancients, demon lover, of all those who wish to live in your eternal night. Here, in your hour of deepest dark, in your temple and before your altar, I twice bind myself to thee as your handmaiden and your betrothed. And with the symbol of your lasting victory, Inscribe the final mark of myself to thee. <laughs> What are you lurking about for your grinning, twisted devil? Not only am I afflicted with this body, but with sleeplessness as well. Losing your sleep because of the tiny dancer, huh? She's nothing to me. I prefer a full-sized woman. Do you now? How do you set about getting such a woman? My master, Prospero, provides me with companions from time to time. A good master? Yes, I suppose so. But I imagine there are better. You'd like to leave Prospero's service? I fear for the security of his reign. If I could find a strong protector, I might dare a change. And what special service have you to offer that might persuade someone else to take you under his protection? All manner of things. I have a crafty and inventive mind. Indeed. For example? The masquerade. I would devise something startling, novel. Something that would be the talk of the entire revel. Have you told Prospero of this novel thing? I fear the prince is much too austere. Will you tell me? Everyone will dress as usual. A harlequin, a Chinese, a soldier or a princess. They will all either be beautiful or humorous but all will be obviously human. I will come as a demon. Why not come as a great ape? When the guests are gathered, you would enter. Arms swinging, advancing toward the screaming lady with lowered head and grinning jaw. It'll be more than a costume. It will be a performance by the cleverest man at the court. Well, 
that I get such a disguise. There is one. In the room of stuffed animals. Another toy Prince Prospero never bothers with anymore. I'm uh, sure it's forgotten. You really think it would cause a sensation? Oh, yes. And there is uh, more to the game. Mark. Prospero did that to you? No. I did it to myself. Marks me as one of Satan's handmaidens. Are you ill? No. It was a difficult ceremony. The hills of ignorance were lifted from my eyes. There's only one more right to perform. And I will be wed to Satan. You've given away your soul. Yes. Gladly. Soon all the innocence will be gone. Then I will have immortality. And I shall have Prospero. But I must be certain. And if you were gone... Gladly, if there were a way. Would you dare to leave the safety of this castle? There is no safety for me here. This key will unlock the cell. The guard on the north wall has been bribed. Take your Gino and your father and go. Oh, but the guards, the way through to the dungeons. You've been to the armory and to the dungeons. You must make your own way. Now go, quickly.
Gino? <laughs> I think I heard something. Ah, sit down and play. Juliana betrayed us. She betrayed me. What can you want of two men who've done you no harm? They killed three of my guards, three human beings. According to your faith, they have sinned greatly. And tomorrow at the feast before the mask, at least one of them must pay for those sins. Well, here we have our beginnings of our film. And the thing that always stood out to me was how beautiful all the sets are. I yeah. mean, they're well made. And we come to find that they were reused from the movie Beckett. And uh, David Weston, who plays Gino in this film, also played Brother John in that film. And uh, man, you can really tell the quality of the sets, I mean. Oh yeah, the, oh, they yeah, left no detail unnoticed. The castle shots look wonderful. Yes. Again, very atmospheric. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they film this in five weeks. That seems so short. It, it does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And this was Roger Corman's first British film, as well as Vincent Price. The, you know that seems odd because it, I feel as if Vincent Price was, was probably in something. Um, a British film before this. Well, yeah, you would feel that way because, you know, somewhat, I mean, here in the States, we almost feel like Vincent Price is British. Right, yeah, <laughs> right, you're right. Because he right. carried himself with such style and grace yeah. and class. Yes, that we're used to in the British films. Yes. Right. Not many American actors no. had that. Right, that's right, yes. Now, you know, they had um, originally announced that Basil Rathbone was to be Vincent Price's co-star. Wow. Yeah. That would have been tremendous. Now, I assume he would have played um, Alfredo. Yes. Yeah. But Patrick McGee does a good job. Of course he does a great job. He's pretty rotten. Oh, he is pretty rotten, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He is. And you know, interesting, um, the screenplay is by Charles Beaumont. Now, he's done uh, some great Twilight Zones. A couple of my favorites. One, uh, The Howling Man. Yeah. Uh, which has uh, John Carradine yeah, in it. Yeah, he's good. Very good. And um, uh, The Printer's Devil, which has Burgess Meredith. Yeah, Burgess Meredith is always great too. Absolutely. But you know, uh, the film has off to a good start, mm -hmm. but it just draws you in, just like Lisa and the Devil. It has Absolutely. that dreamlike quality. It does, you're right, and it does have a lot of that feel yes. to it, but it's yes. still sinister. It is. Right, it's still scary. and There's an impending doom lurking. Absolutely. So let's get back. The Mask of the Red Death. Oh, <laughs> 
Hear me. Hear me! Soon you will be costuming yourselves for the mask. A celebration, my friends. A celebration of victory over death. Of evil over good. Senor Scarlatti and his wife will not be joining as he failed to obey my orders. But because of me, through my mediation with my master, the Lord of Flies, you, all of you, unworthy though you may be, will be safe from the Red Death. We promise you. Unless, of course, you incur our displeasure. For some of you are guilty of acts against us. Acts of faith, perhaps. And all of you, I suspect, still harbor some sacred thoughts. But no more. The fallen angel will protect you. And now, for a small entertainment, guards. These two men are true believers. They believe in a God who preached, love thy neighbor. Therefore, they refuse to fight each other in order to save one of their lives. However, I have devised a plan whereby each may have the honor and glory of saving the other's life. And there are five daggers here. One of them is impregnated with a poison that kills in five seconds. Each man, in turn, will cut his forearm. Begin. Would you not lay down your life for your brother? seconds. Five seconds. not played properly, so both will die. No! You're a madman. And yet I will live and you will die. Where is your God now in the hour of your need? I will see him. In paradise. In the role of a martyr. Hm. Now, 
I will not have you killed. I will set you free instead. Free to go back to your village and the Red Death. I beg you! I am only giving him a further glorious chance to test his faith, my dear. Out! I'll come back to you, Francesca. Somehow I'll come back! <laughs> Prince Prospero, let me go with him. You? Please. You? Oh, no, my dear, I could not bear to think of... No. You will go to your rooms now and prepare for the mask. You will not appear in your costumes until midnight. Why do you follow me? Bring Gino back and I will do whatever you wish. You would destroy yourself for him? Yes. You almost caused me to doubt. Prospero? My prince. I'm ready. Son, tell me of it. God. My God. Who is your God? The true one. Yes. Tell me. I've sinned. I've killed. For yourself? No. No, I'm afraid. For yourself? For Francesca. And for me. I must go back for her, but I don't know how. What weapon can I use against Prospero? Love? In the air, through the trees, I found myself loving only myself. I'm afraid of the town where the Red Death walks. I'm afraid of Prospero and his castle. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I give you a sign. What does it mean? Mankind. Won't this thing become uncomfortably hot? It will become a little warm. But it won't be for long. After the unmasking, you can take it off. Because the game will be over. Well enough. Get on with it. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. See yourself. Ah. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> crouch low <laughs> and uh, swing your arms. <laughs> Back, mighty animal. 
I am your keeper, brought from deepest Africa to control your great strength. Back! Back! Where'd you go? The burial ground's beyond the hill. We go to the castle. Why? To beg forgiveness of the prince. Forgiveness for what? For however we have sinned. You'll beg forgiveness at the house of Satan himself. Better than the Red Death. Stop, stop! Constitute satanicum dominum domas sua. Principem omnis possessionis suae. Alleluia. Prospero? Prospero? I am betrothed of the devil. And I have seen the terrors. Not all.
I have survived my own sacrifice. There is more. And I'm stronger in the devil's favor than you are. shall live as man and wife. When he calls us, you will be safe. And I still your wife. I have tasted the beauties of terror. I beg you, do not mourn for Juliana. We should celebrate. She has just married a friend of mine. Let the mass begin! Officer of the Night Watch! Who are you? All that is left of the village of Catania. Then go back to it. We beg mercy of the Lord Prince Prospero. Inform the Prince, it might amuse him. Don't grovel to him. Don't let him delight in the destruction of your souls. I wish to save our bodies, the few left to us. Do you expect any plea to move his heart? If we must die, let's die like human beings. You have not seen the Red Death. And you've not seen the dungeons of Prospero. Don't be frightened. Come with me. This is Gino. This is my child. I must give her every chance. Where does the rabbit run? That one fears Prospero more than the Red Death. What do you want? Mercy, great prince. This is all that is left of us. In the winter, it comes on the freezing wind. There is no shelter. Dig a burrow, as the fox and rabbits do. But the wells and the streams, they will be frozen over. There is no food. Then store up nuts like the squirrels. Mercy. Give us the sanctuary of the castle walls. Give me an end to your pleading. Go back from whence you came. We will die. If you refuse to go, then die here, Archers. But not the child. It will perish anyway. Not the child. Fire. Fire. Gifts. Gifts for everyone. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds, pearls for my friends. All my guests, look at them. <laughs> look at them, all scrambling like starving men for crusts of bread. <laughs> all wealthy and all greedy for more. I give you reason for real rejoicing, my friends. The only survivors of the village have just come to the castle walls. 
Only six. The Red Death has claimed the rest of them. But as I promised you, all of you within these walls, under my protection, are safe. So rejoice. And the six who lived? Dead. But they demanded to enter the castle. You killed them. It was a kindness, my dear. Can't you see that? The Red Death brings pain and terror and madness. I spared them. Tonight, after the mask, I will initiate you into understanding. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, my son. Remain here. Shortly after the stroke of one, I will send Francesca to you. I must get to her now. You have recovered your courage. Now prove your wisdom. There is nothing you can do. There are too many. Wait as I tell you. The guards will discover me. Look there. startling you. It's only hot toad. Made more ugly than even he is. You're not ugly to me. I've come to tell you that there's no need for you to appear at the mask tonight. I don't understand. My plans are made. If you will trust me and believe in me, we'll leave this monstrous castle tonight. Do we dare? The Red Death. It can be no worse than life here. Believe in me. I do believe in you. Have a warm cloak and be ready. The game is almost over. <laughs> Control this monster. Ah, you only want the game. My dear, I, 
I believe Hop Toad is playing some sort of a joke on Alfredo. I will set you to tortures unimagined. You have already tortured by your cruelty to my Esmeralda. Hold this! The great African ape says he wants some brandy! turn away from the cruelties of life. I no longer care. My life is done. What's left, I give to you tonight. Guards, clear that out of the way. How can my guests be expected to dance around that? And when you find Hop Toad, give him five pieces of gold as a reward for his entertaining jest. You've pleased me very much, my dear. What was that? What is it? A costume I haven't seen before. Someone wearing red, and I forbade them to wear red. Come. <laughs> Again. Come. <laughs> wait, wait. Wait. I command you to wait. Prospero. You command me to wait. Very well. I wait. Condotti? Rimini? Who are you beneath your mask? Is my costume such a disguise that you don't recognize me? Your voice, it's familiar. Battori Pernelli, that's who you are. Nelly, you dog, thinking to... You're not Bernal. No. The doctor dances in the white room. But I passed close by him. Truly, Prospero, you don't know me. So you've come? Yes, Prospero. On your knees. Prospero. On your knees. The Prince of Darkness. I would like to see your face. There is no face of death. Until the moment of your own death. And I am only one of many messengers. Who do you come for? Many. All? Not all. I knew I was right. I knew it. I've won. The time of unmasking. They begin to show their naked faces. Time for a new dance to begin. The 
dance of death. master will be pleased. I brought all of these souls to him. I, I taught them his worship. I corrupted them for him. I knew he was supreme when no one else did. I built a chapel to Satan. And I prayed to him and I made a pact with him. And these, all of my friends, I, I promised them safety. You presumed too much. I know, I know, but it does make a fine jest. The kind of jest that would amuse Satan. Would it? Your Excellency, this girl, in all my life, I've never met anyone whose faith rivaled mine. Spare her to me. A charitable request, a rare thing with you, Prospero. Go to the battlements. Go now. Yes, Francesca. Yes, go, and I will join you when this is over. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the girl. I have no title. Why do you call me Excellency? Well, I thought as the ambassador of Satan... He is not my master. Death has no master. But Satan rules the universe. I made a pact with him. He does not rule alone. And your pact with him will not save you. There is no other god. Satan killed him. Each man creates his own god for himself. His own heaven, his own hell. Let me see your face. Your hell, Prince Prospero, and the moment of your death. No. No! No!
pray to die. Your soul has been dead for a long time. Morning, brother. Have you come far? From Cathay and beyond. One hundred thousand perished at my passing this last night. This eternity of wandering. Ten thousand sleep where I walked. I am very tired. The weariness of those to whom we bring rest burdens you. What of you, brother? I called many. Peasant and prince, the worthy and the dishonored. Six only are left, young man and woman, a dwarf and a tiny dancer. This child and an old man still in the village. Sick transit, Gloria Mundi.
we're glad to see that you're still with us. And uh, one thing that we need to touch upon is uh, Jane Asher. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, how would you feel being an up-and-coming, you know, actor, actress? But Jane Asher is mostly known for... Being Paul McCartney's girlfriend. Main squeeze. At that at that point, from what, 64 to 68-ish? Yes. Late 60s. And he wrote songs about her. Right. And then she caught him, you know, shacking up with another woman. Well, it was Paul McCartney. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's right. she thinking? Right. What's she thinking? Well, I mean, you know, she didn't really go on to do um, anything as notable, I think, as this later on. I mean, didn't he want her to quit acting? Was, was it something like that? He wanted her to quit acting. And she was like, nah, I'm not doing that. And then, you know, she caught him with a, with a side piece. Well, you know. Paul McCartney. Exactly. I mean, that was when being famous really meant something. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's right, but you think she got some Beatle records in her collection? I don't think she has any Beatle records. <laughs> she has all Stones records. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, right? She's like, Mick was better anyway. Yeah, Mick, right? yeah, Mick, he could dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now, and, uh, you know, they had constructed two miles of corridor through three sound stages for Jane Asher to run through in this movie. Now, I'm not saying she ran a straight two miles. But still. That's a lot. Would you run it? I'd have died. <laughs> I'd be dead. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. They'd have been propping me up. I'd be like, what's that wheezing sound? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yep. And uh, the other funny thing that we noticed was uh, Esmeralda was played by Verena Greenlaw, who was a child. Right, but her voice is so overdubbed, so sultry. It's not right. It, it There's ain't. something wrong no, it, with that, isn't there? I was surprised the first time I saw it. I was like, what? <laughs> I know. What was that? I know. And you know, you seem to forget that you think in 64, you know, this movie has so much occultism. Satanism. It does. Right? It does. And the things that the Vincent Price says throughout the movie, you know, God is dead. Yeah. Yeah. A deity long forgotten. I bet you that, it, well, it was censored in Great Britain. Well, yeah. I, uh, the part with Hazel Court, uh, where she's um, um, uh, in the dream sequence, yes. she's being murdered again and again, was censored. Yes. Yeah. And they didn't play this movie in Spain until 1983. Wow. You know, wow. That's, that's a Catholic country there, eh? Yeah. They ain't playing none of that. <laughs> you know? No, right. And you know, I guess there was a remake of this uh, in the late 80s. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see it either. But who was in it? Um, I think uh, Patrick McNee was in it. And Adrian I Paul, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember yep. hearing about it, but I was like, he's the Highlander. I don't know. <laughs> there can be only one. There can only so, be one. Right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the nice thing at the very end of the movie, the Latin phrase, sic transit gloria mundi. Thus goes the glory of the world. Yeah. It's pretty heavy. It is pretty heavy. It is. It's a great, great movie. It, it really is. is. Yeah, it is. It's in my rotation. Oh, yeah. Of movies that I watch quite often. If you're new in our circle, this is the movie we're showing. Yeah. Absolutely. That's right. Yeah. Well, we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. I hope you join us again for the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time, good, good night. night. Thank you.